Hello, and welcome to a special program from CUNY TV. I'm Carol Ann Riddell. For months, the COVID-19 pandemic has gripped the world with devastating effects. As of this taping, more than 200,000 people have died in the United States, more than 20,000 of those in New York City alone. CUNY has not been untouched by this tragedy. Sadly, we've lost faculty, staff, and students from all walks of life. Over the next half hour, you will hear from the colleagues and friends of those victims. They'll share with us their memories and their grief. Unfortunately, this memorial cannot be fully comprehensive. The CUNY community includes thousands across the globe, and there will be those who passed away we won't hear about today. But we hope by highlighting some of those we've lost, we can honor every member of the CUNY family who has passed and bring some comfort to those who knew them. Now, please join us as we remember our colleagues, our mentors, and our friends. There is no way to adequately articulate the impact of losing more than 40 members of our faculty, staff, and student body, in addition to many other members of the CUNY community, including retirees and alumni. Each individual leaves a legacy of accomplishment through their scholarship, through their character, and through their commitment to the mission of CUNY. We remember a variety of other intangible qualities, such as the kindness and generosity of their deeds. They were advocates for social justice and champions of accessibility. Courageous men and women who stood up, who spoke up, and worked hard to make change. Some of them knew both sides of the classroom, having attended and later taught at the City University of New York. Their memories will live on through the countless lives they shaped, the opportunities they created, the research and writings they authored, and in the classrooms they enlightened. Each person provided an essential ingredient to the CUNY melting pot, and no amount of words can express the grief we all feel. Because we could not hold an in-person memorial, we launched an in-memoriam webpage to pay tribute to these members of our community whose lives were taken so soon. And now, through this program, we continue to tell their stories celebrate their accomplishments, and pay tribute to the lives they lived. To our CUNY family, my name is Hector Batista. I'm the Chief Operating Officer and Executive Vice Chancellor here at CUNY. Today I, I talk to you about my, uh, my dear friend, Alan Lou. I met Alan Lou about 30 years ago. We were on working on a project on opposite sides of, of an issue. I remember when Alan uh, showed up in our uh, at Borough Hall at 209 Geralman Street for the first meeting, and it really struck me very early in the meeting. It's a very complicated project. This guy who I really had a can-do attitude, and that really um, sort of hit, connected with me because uh, I pride myself on being someone who has a can, a can-do attitude. And um, even though through that project, we, we bought it heads and because we both represented different interests, um, it was that mutual can-do attitude that really helped us move that project along. And through that project, we developed a, a relationship, a friendship, a professional friendship. He uh, then um, got a job in Washington, DC, and he was commuting back and forth but, you know, Alan really made his mark in Washington. He, he built the Conventionist Bureau. He was responsible for building the National Stadium where the Nationals play. Most recently, he, he worked on the, the school system, on the Deferred Maintenance Program for schools. You know, it was that can-do attitude that Alan had. You know, he didn't take no, and he, he sort of moved things along. So when... I was lucky enough to be asked by the chancellor to become the uh, COO of CUNY. And uh, we had a retirement, one of, of the senior vice chancellor for facilities retired. And there was an opportunity 
that I thought was perfect for Alan. I talked to the chancellor about it and we, as we were going through the process of finding, finding a replacement, uh, the chancellor had a chance to, to meet uh, Alan. And I remember we had, a, we had a lunch at the university club where Alan was so excited. We had talked about it and, and we spent like almost an hour and a half there. If the chancellor got five minutes in, it was a lot. Alan just talked. I remember calling him and saying, dude, man, you just talk so much. You don't let the chancellor get a word in. He was like, oh my God, I can't believe it. But I was just trying to make all the points of uh, why I think this would be great. And then we were all, you know, I was lucky enough to be able to offer him the job in December. And I, I was so excited about what we could do together. And so, look, I, uh, we, his family, you know, he, he lost a father, they lost a husband, a grandfather. Uh, I lost a dear friend. Alan, you, you're going to be missed. Your legacy will, uh, will go on. You know, this, this horrible disease t has taken a really, really good one from us at a, too young, but um, you'll always be in our heart and our prayers. I miss you, my dear friend. May you rest in peace. Hello, everyone. I'm Michelle Anderson, the president of Brooklyn College. The COVID-19 pandemic has taken important and beloved colleagues from us in the Brooklyn College community. These people dedicated their lives to a mission here at the college bigger than themselves, and we mourn with their families, friends, and colleagues. I want to take this opportunity to join other CUNY presidents to share a little bit about these unsung educational heroes whose absence is felt immensely. Moshe Augenstein was an institution on our campus. He graduated from Brooklyn College in 1969 and served the college as a professor for 45 years. His last role was serving as the undergraduate deputy chair in the Department of Computer and Information Science. Moshe wrote and co-authored books in advanced topics in the art of computer programming. He was known by all as a soft-spoken, hardworking, and gentle soul. Professor Aaron Tenenbaum graduated from Brooklyn College in 1970. and, like Moshe, found his way back to Brooklyn College as a professor. In 1974, Aaron was hired as an assistant professor in the recently formed Computer Information Science Department. Together with other young hires like Moshe, he helped shape the curriculum of this brand new department. Aaron was an excellent professor and developed a specialty in crucial data structures. Over the next 15 years, he wrote a series of books on this topic, some of which are still in use today. Aaron became chair of the CIS department in 1985 and served in that role for some 25 years. Professor Mark Bloom enjoyed a long and distinguished career as an Obie award-winning stage and screen actor. He also taught in the college's MFA acting program for 15 years. Mark's most notable credits on Broadway include 12 Angry Men and Lost in Yonkers, among many others. An outpouring of love and grief from students flooded social media after he passed. One student said, quote, Mark was a wizard of encouraging us to bring ourselves to the character while separating criticism of the art from criticism of the artist. He encouraged us to be dangerous, be specific, and to honor the hard work that comes with the calling of being an actor. I'll never forget that, end quote. Renowned physicist Peter Brancasio was another professor whose work was known far and wide. Teaching at Brooklyn College for more than 30 years, he gained celebrity in both the science and sports worlds for debunking myths such as the length of Michael Jordan's hang time. One of Peter's colleagues said of him, quote, Peter was a good friend, a masterful teacher, and a beloved mentor to decades of students. Peter dearly loved his wife of 57 years, Ronnie, his family, travel, opera, and his Italian heritage, end quote. Paul Sheldon was a gifted and respected clarinetist, saxophonist, flautist, conductor, arranger, and educator. 
As a professor of music, he taught for 34 years at the Conservatory of Music at Brooklyn College. He played under Leonard Bernstein, and he had a huge impact on everyone he touched. Paul also served as director of music in the college's former School of General Studies, as an assistant dean for research and graduate studies, and a founder of the conservatory's clarinet quartet. A staff member who we will miss dearly is Juliette Monroe, a Brooklyn College graduate from the class of 2007 who received her bachelor's degree in Africana Studies. She worked at the college for more than 12 years and served as a human resources manager for recruitment and employee relations, playing a critical role to help us fill vacancies and expand our family with quality people. Juliet pursued an industrial and labor relations master's degree at Baruch, continuing her career in human resources as a CUNY recruitment coordinator. She was also a proud Jamaican rooted Brooklynite who was active in her community. As a colleague, it was said that Juliet never liked being addressed as HR manager or Ms. Munra. She simply wanted people to call her Juliet. Rest in peace, Juliet, and all the other Brooklyn College family members we have lost to this terrible pandemic. We will carry on our work at Brooklyn College in your honor. Hi, I'm Samir Chopra, Professor of Philosophy at the Department of Philosophy at Brooklyn College. I'm here to say a few words about my good friend, Jay Jankelowicz, who we lost to uh, COVID-19. When Jay passed away, uh, and we received the news about, uh, about that from our chair, Robert Lertz, to say that the department was shocked would be an understatement. We had not lost a co-worker, we had all lost a good friend. And my feelings at that time, which I expressed in uh, some writing online and in a couple of meetings with my department workers and my colleagues and friends, was that Jay was someone who fused the ideas of being a coworker and a friend with all of us. When he came to our department, we were a typical Brooklyn College department. We were overworked. We were uh, often understaffed. Um, we had to do a lot of the administrative work ourselves. Um, Jay, you know, frankly was uh, a revitalization in the literal sense of the word. He brought new life into the department. He helped us do our work and he did so with gusto and pleasure. I think he genuinely saw work as something that he enjoyed and he saw all of us, his coworkers as his friends first and foremost. So when he helped us, it was a question of him helping a friend out that would help that friend do his work better. Jay was, I think, um, someone who, I think in a very good sense, proprietary about the department. He saw it as his place, his space, something that he was genuinely proud of, that he wanted to help flourish in that real sense. And when I, when I, when I use the word flourish, I mean that advisedly, that help it be the best it can. You know, when he would come to our meetings, uh, we would invite him to come to our meetings, to our faculty meetings, to give these reports, and he would, uh, and we would all sit back and enjoy his corny sense of humor, the, the jokes he had, uh, little, the little tricks he'd like to play. We all had running jokes with him whenever we went into the office. Uh, sometimes it could be a reason that we would look, look forward to going into the office was to just have a little light break. And uh, one of the ways you did that was by talking with Jay. Uh, I sometimes like to think that Jay's centrality to the department was captured by the way that Jay organized the end of the year holiday parties. Uh, that's where it all came together. Uh, the celebration, the fun, the awards, the beaming on as everybody stood on and you know accepted thanks or congratulations. Um, the games that he would, <laughs> the games and quizzes he'd come up with. And there's this one photograph of him taken at a holiday party where he's, you know, we're all sort of standing in a row and some of us are sitting in front and Jay's right in the middle. Um, and he's in the middle because, because he's, <laughs> because he's the heart of the department. And I um, like to think that that's what Jay was at his best. Uh, something that um, brought life to us and, um, and kept us going. Uh, so we miss you, Jay. And uh, we love you very much. Thank you. Thanks very much.
Over the course of the COVID-19 pandemic, the City College of New York lost five valuable members of our community. Uh, William Helmreich was a distinguished professor of sociology, had been at City College for almost 40 years, and had written uh, about a range of topics from the prospects, the life prospects of Holocaust survivors when they came to the United States, to immigration, to life inside of yeshivas. But he's probably most known for his more recent work, in which, in a series of books, he walked and described every street in New York City. Willie loved to talk, and his books were full of the joyous dialogue of discovery, and we miss him dearly. Michael Sorkin was also a distinguished professor, maybe the most famous member of our architecture school, and he spent his career drawing inspirational, fanciful uh, cityscapes. Uh, and at City College inspired an entire generation of students to dream about what the built environment could look like and should look like in a just society. Ray Hubler had recently retired from the math department at CCNY and also at the CUNY Graduate Center, and he was interested in numbers and how they behave. His interests spanned from uh, algebraic geometry to the study of polynomial equations, but of late he was most fascinated with a close examination of the rich data set that Raj Chetty and his collaborators had produced describing social mobility in American uh, academic institutions and specifically at City College. Um, he also spent his summers in Otsego County, Michigan, where he lived uh, and family land on the Pigeon River and was in the area a renowned steward of the environment. Daniel Padovano came to City College in 2012. Um, he was a graduate of Hunter College, his master's degree at Concordia College. He worked in our bursar's office and in that capacity year in and year out, um, in addition to the regular work of a bursar, spent particular time working with students in financial difficulty helping them figure out how they could find a way forward to finance their education. Leonard Trugman was a member of the City College Economics Department and a graduate of that department as well. After leaving CCNY, he pursued a very successful career in business for decades. And when he retired, he wanted to come back and bring his knowledge and experience to the education of a new generation of economics students. And so he taught both from the economics canon and from his vast experience in business. Each of these five men made indelible contributions to their departments and to City College. They spent years of their lives working with colleagues on this campus and with students to advance the mission of an accessible education for the whole people. We mourn them all. We look for them every day. We'll miss them and remember them forever. I'm Jonathan Hollaby. I'm a teacher at the High School of American Studies at Lehman College. Uh, Ulysses Castro was a Lehman College peace officer. He was assigned to our school for most of his 16 year career at Lehman. Castro had a quick laugh and a quick wit and a quick way of moving kids to class. And sometimes when a kid was drifting, Castro tried to push them in the right direction. I remember the exasperated sound of Castro, or come on Castro, from seniors who knew he was right. He cared about them. He cared about our school. He was protective of the building of the students of us, the faculty, and we knew it. A pillar of strength, a retired math teacher wrote on Learning the Sad News, I loved it. Castro always had the late shift and was often there when I was settling in to do the scheduling. Those late afternoons and early evenings we talked. We talked about labor, we talked about sports, we talked about politics, we talked about policing. We gossiped. Castro often took a psychological approach. He delved into the motivation of individuals. What made them do the things, good or bad, that they did? I want more time to think about Ulysses, about the hours we spent talking, about what he meant to our small schools community. I will miss him. Hello, I'm Berenice Johnson Eames, president of York College, CUNY. I wanna take this opportunity to honor the memory of the members of our community that were lost during this COVID pandemic time. We are devastated at the loss, but joined together in honoring the memory of each of these 
particular people and all that they brought to our space. We thank them for being a part of your college. Paul Klein, Assistant Professor, Business and Economics. Luis Diaz, Custodial Assistant, Building and Grounds. Ralph Steinberg, Adjunct Assistant Professor, Chemistry. Samuel Borstein, Professor Emeritus. William Tulo Duval, Professor Emeritus. Yves Rosas, Adjunct Assistant Professor, Occupational Therapy. David Ernst, Professor Emeritus. Rashmi Christian, Finance Procurement Manager, Business Office. We cannot be more devastated and profoundly touched by the fact that we lost these members to this devastating pandemic experience. But what we hope is that we can circle together as a community and hold each other up and be strong and honor the memory of these wonderful people. We honor them as One York Community, One York College. Thank you. My name is Anne Delokin. I am the chair of the Department of Humanities at New York City College of Technology. I was fortunate enough to have Carmen Valle as my friend and colleague for many, many years. I remember when I first met Carmen being struck by how extraordinary her presence was. She was a bouquet of flowers in every sense of the word. The colors that she put together in her incredible outfits, the jewelry, her, her her bracelets, her rings, um, the fire in her eye and that perpetual, very faint bouquet of lily of the valley that followed her wherever she went. We used to wait for her to arrive every day just because she made such an entrance every single time. Carmen was a, an extraordinary colleague to all of us. She, with Professor Granados, ran the Puerto Rican and Latin American Studies Division of our program. Um, brought in poets to read, and of course there were her wonderful poetry readings as well. Carmen was uh, very passionate and fiery, as I'm sure many know from just her poetry, but even as a person there was no issue that she didn't have a really strong and clearly articulated opinion on. She was a really dear friend and in some ways looked out for me almost like a sister over time. Um, we will never quite fill the void that she has left. We'd like to end today's program with a video tribute. These are our co-workers and friends, and we miss them dearly.
We hope this program brought some small comfort to those of you who knew these individuals. As fellow members of the CUNY community, we can assure you they deeply impacted our lives. The university is worse for their loss and they will be deeply missed. We also hope these stories help to honor all victims, whether from CUNY or elsewhere. We won't forget them. To everyone watching, thank you for being with us. Please stay safe and take care of one another.